The Troy Ride Labyrinth was created for an equine labyrinth workshop held at the Labyrinth Society's annual gathering in 2010 in New Harmony, Indiana. The Labyrinth, a mirrored Seventh Circuit classic, was designed by Jeff Soward based on Virgil's description of the game of Troy. Scaled for horses, the Labyrinth has four-foot-wide paths, a 30-foot center circle, and an overall diameter of 86 feet. It was made for the workshop, on the principle of Leave No Trace, out of leaf mould covered in athletic field lime. The Troy Ride is performed by members of the Posey County Saddle Club. Inspiration for recreating the Troy Ride were lines describing the game of Troy from the Aeneid Book 5, which were first written down by the Roman poet Publius Virgilius Maro, better known to the world as Virgil. Born of rustic stock near Mantua in Italy in 70 BC, the Aeneid was surely his greatest epic work. It recorded the wanderings of Aeneas following the Trojan Wars, which, according to Roman legend, led to the ultimate founding of Rome itself. Started around 30 BC and largely completed by 19 BC at the time of his death, Virgil had asked that the manuscript be destroyed in the event of his death, but Varius, his executor, under pressure from the emperor Augustus, edited the work and ensured its publication and subsequent fame. The Lucis Troy, or Trojan Game, was supposedly first introduced by the Roman general and statesman Sulla around 80 BC and revived by Julius Caesar in 45 or 46 BC, perhaps in connection with his family claim to have descended from Julius, the son of Aeneas. The Emperor Augustus, considered the first true emperor of the Roman Empire, ruled from 27 BC to his death in 14 AD, the time of the so-called Pax Romana. He was an important patron for Virgil and subsequently established the Lucius Troy as a regular event. Interestingly, coins issued in Crete during his reign occasionally featured the classical Cretan labyrinth on their reverse. The version of Enid Book 5 read here today narrating the ride is Jeff Soward's slightly adapted version of the Dryden edition. John Dryden translated, rendered Virgil in heroical verse and first published his work in 1697. Aeneas and his fellow exiles, fleeing the sack of Troy, are banished to wander the Mediterranean Sea for seven years. After many adventures and setbacks, they are driven by storms to the coast of Sicily, where, welcomed by King Acestes, himself of Trojan stock, Aeneas celebrates the memory of his father Anchises, the mortal husband of the goddess Aphrodite and the cousin of King Priam of Troy, by holding funeral games in his honor. Following a series of trials of strength and marksmanship, Aeneas announces a test of horse-riding skill. Of arms I sing, and the man, who forced by fate, in Juno's unrelenting hate, exiled, left the Trojan shore. Long labors, both by sea and land, he bore, and in the doubtful war, before he won the Latian realm, and built the destined town, his banished gods restored to rites divined, and settle sure succession for his line, from whence the race of Alba Longa come, and the walls of majestic Rome. Father Aeneas, before the games were wholly done, called Epitides, tutor to his son, and whispered thus, with speed, as Canius find, and if his childish troop be ready joined, on horseback let him grace his grandsire's day, and lead his equals armed in just array. So calling out, the circle he clears, the crowd withdrawn, an open plain appears. And now the noble youths of form divine advance before their fathers in a line. The riders grace the steeds, the steeds with glory shine.
Their helmets adorned with laurel wreaths they wear, each brandishing aloft two cornel spears. Some at their backs their gilded quivers bore, their chains of burnished gold hung down before. Three graceful troops they formed upon the green, three graceful leaders at their heads were seen. Twelve followed every chief and left a space between. The first young Priam led, a lovely boy, whose grandsire was the unhappy king of Troy. His race in after times was known to fame, new honors adding to the Latian name. And well the royal boy his Thracian steed became. White were the fetlocks of his feet before, and on his front a snowy star he bore. Then beauteous Attis, with Julius bred, of equal age, the second squadron led. The last in order, but the first in place, first in the lovely features of his face, rode fair Ascanius, on a fiery steed, Queen Dido's gift, and of the Tyrian breed. Sure courses for the rest the king ordains, with golden bits adorned, and purple reins. The pleased spectators peals of shouts renew, and all the parents and the children view, their make, their motions, and their sprightly grace, and hopes and fears alternate in their face. The unfledged commanders and their martial train first make the circuit of the sandy plain. Around their sires and at the appointed sign, drawn up in beauteous order, form a line. The second signal sounds, the troop divides, in distinguished parts with distinguished guides. Again they close and once again disjoin, in troop to troop opposed and line to line. They meet, they wheel, they throw their darts afar, with harmless rage and well-dissembled war. Then and around the mingled bodies run, flying they follow and pursuing shun. Broken they break, and rallying they renew in other forms the military show. At last, in order undiscerned, they join, and march together in a friendly line. And as the Cretan labyrinth of old, with wandering ways and many a winding fold, involved the weary feet without redress in a round error which denied recess, so fought the Trojan boys in warlike play, turned and returned, and still, a different way. Thus dolphins in the deep each other chase, in circles as they swim around the watery race. This game, these carousels, Ascanius taught, and building Alba Longa to the Latins brought. Showed what he learned, the Latin sires impart to their succeeding sons the graceful art. From these, imperial Rome received the game, which Troy the youths, the Trojan troop, they name. The connection between the Lucis Troy, the Trojan game, and the labyrinth is often traced back to the famous Tragliatella vase, a 7th century Etruscan wine jug, which depicts mounted youths emerging from a labyrinth bearing the legend Troia, one possible meaning of which is Troy. Virgil explicitly compares the patterns of the drill to the Cretan labyrinth. Labyrinths were used to train warriors and horses in trials of strength and marksmanship. The next ride is a test of horse-riding skill. In Virgil's words, So intricate, in ancient times on mountainous Crete, they say, the labyrinth between walls and the dark ran crisscross a bewildering thousand ways. Devised by guile, a maze insoluble, breaking down every clue to the way out. So intricate the drill of Trojan boys, who wove the patterns of their prancing horses, figured in sports, retreats, and skirmishes. With speed, Ascanius find, 
and if his troop be ready joined, on horseback, let him grace his grandsire's day. The first young Priam led, a lovely boy, and well the royal boy his Thracian steed became. White were the fetlocks of his feet before, and on his front a snowy star he bore. The last in order, but the first in place. First in the lovely features of his face rode fair Ascanius, on a fiery steed, Queen Dido's gift, and of the Tyrian breed. So fought the Trojan boys in warlike play, turned and returned, and still a different way. The riders grace the steeds, the steeds with glory shine. Thus marching on in military pride, shouts of applause resound from side to side. Jeff especially designed the Trojan Ride Labyrinth for us so that we could follow Virgil's poem. And the interesting thing, of course, is that we've actually got a picture of that. Um, from some 600 years prior to Virgil writing it down, which is on the famous Traglia Tella vase, and indeed, here, stand up, Cordelia, um, and you'll see the riders have been riding around with their tabards on today, with this depiction on of two riders on horseback issuing from the entrance of a labyrinth, and written around the outer circuit is the word Troy. Um, you may be the first people to have witnessed that actually happening but, uh, since the decline of the Roman Empire. <laughs>